Good morning, everybody. So yesterday, we had the inaugural RTB Summit, and I've been given 15 minutes to sum up what we took a morning and the evening previously uh, to cover. So my name is Adam Simon, and I'm the uh, Retail Managing Director uh, for Context. What is R2B? So we're looking at Soho, micro and small businesses who purchase ICT products, hardware and services through the retail channel. And the target is businesses of less than 25 seats. The format was an industry event which was hosted by Context for retailers, distributors, and vendors by invitation to examine a growth opportunity. And we did it in the Fairmont Hotel in the beautiful Salle de la Mer. Now, some of you don't know Context, so I just introduced who we are. So for 31 years, we've been tracking international ICT channels for distribution. We are the GTDC's official database partner outside of North America. We're pioneering new areas of research in retail. You can see us on the hashtag, hashtag new retail thinking. And there is an open invitation to our sales panel for all retailers, e-tailers, and distributors to benefit from the insights from our data and from our research. So there are three whys that we went into this uh, theme of R to B. The first is that retailers are looking for ways to grow their revenues and profits. And we had a very good presentation by Via on the characteristics of the consumer compared to the characteristics of the small and medium-sized business. The spend, medium low of the consumer, the business is higher, the basket is higher, the price sensitivity is less. There is, according to the analysis which they've done, a lower price sensitivity, greater profitability, more repeat business, greater loyalty, a focus for vendors on both, and we didn't know, so we had a question mark about how much marketing dollars there are. Added to that, on the right-hand side of the slide, is what Via called the real secret, which is creating sustainable revenue flows on a repeat annuity basis. So that was the first why. The second why is to grow new categories. So we took a case study of Brother A3 inkjet printers, which were launched in 2009 in Q3 2010, there was a magnificent television advertising campaign, if any of you saw it. It's called the 141%, and it showed how an A3 printer could transform the life of an SMB. Now, it takes all marketing genius to create such desire uh, in an advert about an A3 printer. But if you get the chance, have a look at it on YouTube. It's really great. And what happened was that this reached out to SMB, and the first impact was that uh, you see on the green line, the reseller volumes increased. And then about a year later, there was an inflection point because retail, the fact that it was being advertised, got interested, and so it started growing through the retail channel. And in the Q3 2013, they launched a new product, and you can see that it did extremely well. All of this is context uh, data, which is tracking this to help our clients to follow where they are in the business. So this is about growing new categories. Andy Dow from Tech Data said right at the beginning of this process that if you want to reach SMB, you have to market. And then the third why came from an insight from a study that was commissioned by Microsoft and which Boston Consulting ran with 4,000 small and medium-sized businesses. And what they found is very, very pertinent to everybody in this room and to this whole theme, which is 
that tech-savvy SMBs grow faster, grow jobs, have international customers, are more likely to be in emerging markets, and are the people who lead the SMB activity. So, the importance for the industry is to help turn SMBs into tech-savvy companies. So having looked at uh, the three whys, we then positioned this summit as being looking at strategic options for retailers. We had an advisory board with representation from industry experts from across all areas of discipline. And at the end of our first meeting back in September, Jean-Baptiste Prévoteau from FNAC, who was on the board, said this summit is going to allow people to examine the strategic options for retailers as far as going into r to b or not. And so we come up with three strategic options uh, for retailers. The first is to invest in selling to SMB and decide that going down the r to b route is a good idea. And so we looked at Best Buy. I'm going to take you through that in a minute. And there are others who are really pushing in this area. The DIY uh, retailers are further ahead on this. And we also looked at some of their experience. And if you go to telecom and mobile phone operators, you will see they distinguish very clearly between business and consumer customers. The second option is to subcontract all or part of the processes. So, for example, the FNAC has subcontracted out its service and installation. Or you can bring in expertise. Dixon's in the UK has brought in phones for you. And then even Best Buy attempted, but then resold the activity. They bought a reseller called Mindshift, and then they recently resold it. And that was bringing a reseller in to their activity. And the third option is to do nothing. It's a risky business going into r to b You have to invest in it. So maybe some retailers at the end of it would stick to tactical initiatives. But our goal was to present uh, those strategic decision criteria. So we were extremely fortunate to have our own best practice expert from Best Buy, it's called uh, Greg Parsonson. He was one of the people who put in place Best Buy for Business in 2004 when Best Buy went into it. And he gave us a master class about what elements you have to put in place in order to be successful. CRM, knowing your customer, multi-channel marketing, Omnichannel sales capabilities, having the right team. He told us some length about how they uh, got in the right people, not just young students to be selling, but more mature people in order to deal with small and medium-sized business customers who came into the store. They increased their product range. They brought in 360,000 new SKUs, eight new categories, and they partnered with distribution. And they majored, of course, on the business services, installation, support, credit. And after hearing them, any retailer who seriously wants to go into this market should have their own geek squad. Okay? The geek squad is one of their secrets to success, a company that they bought in and integrated into their processes. We also had some insight from uh, Béranger Lambolet, who had been at Butte and who knows the DIY. And she talked to us about the importance of really getting close to your customer. And so she showed us this lovely advert from Brico Depot. We'll open at 9 the day you start work at 10. Actually, we open at 7 with a coffee. And of course, this is France, a croissant. And what do they do? They create a community of people who come together, plumbers, builders, all different people, 
who come and make retail a destination where you come together as small and medium-sized businesses. Well, all of this is, um, let's say, good, but we also took the care to have a survey commissioned, which Microsoft very uh, generously supported for us in this summit, and we asked them to add in some questions to a survey which they were performing in the UK of 6,000 people who bought PCs in the last two years. And the survey dates were January the 3rd to the 10th, 2014. And of the survey respondents, 881 identified themselves as SMB, and 527 were familiar with purchasing cycles. So th these were the population that were analyzed. And what they said is very, very interesting. So if you look at the very bottom, you will see that 53% of those 520, in fact, 522 who answered that question, 53% felt that major retailers could meet their PC and tech needs. As soon as you go to a larger size, smaller, medium-sized business, so just to make sure we're all on the same page, you've got Soho, small office, home office, micro businesses, zero to five employees, and then small businesses up to 25. As soon as you get to the five to 25, you'll see that percentage goes down, and you'll see that it's 38% who actually feel confident that major retailers can meet their needs. And then they asked why major retailers cannot meet all their needs, and the really important answers are the need for custom specialist solutions, the lack of expertise and specialist knowledge, and the after-sales support. And if you think about what Best Buy had said, this was really the mirror image saying, these are the areas which you have to focus on if you're going to be credible. I'm now going to share with you the feedback from our delegates at this conference, because we also had the voting system, which worked very well. And uh, I will share with you uh, the feedback. So we asked at the beginning how many saw bricks and mortar as a destination for SMB to buy ICT products. And we had an overwhelming vote of yes. Two-thirds of the retailers are planning to invest in CRM this year. There's still a lot of progress that needs to be made. They all recognize this in order to identify uh, their customers and particularly to know which are their business customers. 89% of the delegates plan to expand their range of products to meet SMB needs, and 78% say they can get the products they need. We had quite a discussion about product, but at the end of the day, it's not the main issue in terms of going into this area. 43%, this was the top vote when we asked, what is key to success, 43%, said that business services, installation, support, and credit were vital. The next score was on CRM. We had a strong vote that if this is going to be successful, then vendors need to overhaul their channel programs to address R2B. And this came, interestingly, the people who endorsed this very strongly were the vendors themselves. We discovered what we thought we knew, which is that very few people actually have a marketing budget dedicated to SMB, only 17%. And lastly, and very encouragingly, at the end of the summit, 62% said that they would consider new funded initiatives as a result of the summit. We didn't want this just to be a talking shop. We wanted this to be a real exchange of ideas uh, amongst people from the industry to see if strategically this was interesting. So I end off with seven key takeaways from the summit. The first is there's no magic bullet. And we had the privilege of having Regis Schultz, the CEO of Dati, uh, who opened up with a keynote speech on Tuesday night. And he said, there's nothing easy. There's nothing to be taken for granted. And he was very honest about uh, Dati's own uh, success in this area and seeing ways in which they could improve. 
Multi-channel is the key to sales. He's relaunched the dynamic of sales in Dati. And services is the key for profit. And it was a nice statement, which is, if you can't wrap service around it, don't bother. We had some hard financial realism from Via, which is said to our retailers, take a hard look at the numbers. Do nothing is not an option. And it is a growth opportunity to go into the R2B area. Microsoft encouraged us to, or the retailers, to build on the surprisingly strong showing of confidence in the SMB survey. In terms of vendor retailer programs, we had a very interesting connection that started as a result of the summit. Uh, Microsoft and Fnac got talking, and this was fed back in the, to the large audience. And so Microsoft is saying to the Fnac, you know what, we treat you always from our consumer division, but you are in charge of B2B. He was speaking to Jean-Baptiste. And we need to get our B2B people to talk to you. So connecting the right people to get the right programs in place. And we had Lexmark there as well, who said that they're out of retail at the moment, but they are interested in going back in. And we would restructure their vendor programs. We had a reseller there, and his perspective supported the retail input, which was that insight and meeting customer needs are key, and that they get 75% of their revenues from service. In terms of uh, simplification, we had a discussion about product offering. Retailers want robust products. We talked about the hinges on uh, PCs. And we had an interesting input from Lenovo, who explained that PC production is now in one organization in Lenovo, which I didn't know, and some of us didn't know. And we had a number of distributors who offered solutions to support retail. The last point I'd just like to end up on is that we don't believe this is a zero-sum game of winners and losers. So yes, there is some element of market shift but also there is net new business in this initiative in getting to these smaller businesses, so many of whom go into stores and are never identified, their needs are never addressed. One of the large ICT retailers told us that they have 300,000 business customers, but they reckon that 1.2 million SMB shop with them every year. That means they only know 25% of the SMB who come into their store. Surely there is a net new business in identifying these businesses and dealing with their needs. And every part of the ICT industry has an interest to work on developing European SMBs into tech-savvy companies. In so many of our economies, SMBs are driving growth. And just think about how much more growth and how much more opportunity there'll be for all people in this room if SMBs adopt more technology. If you're interested in this topic, there is a LinkedIn group called Retail to Business. So just join up for that. And also follow us on Twitter. There's two hashtags, hashtag R2B and hashtag New Retail Thinking. Thank you very much.